Hello again, I am Blunty. This video has three components, the what, the why, and the who. Inside this cardboard tube is a lens. I'm going to talk about the mechanics of the thing, the why of the thing, and, well, we'll get to it. It's a crap lens. It's a crap lens because it's cheaply mass-produced. It's a crap lens because it's plastic, not glass. It's crap because its optical engineering is incredibly basic. It's crap because it has no adjustable aperture iris. It's crap because it can't alter focus. Well, it can, but you have to use this one weird trick. Uh, and it's crap because it was designed, manufactured, and intended for use on crappy disposable film cameras. And I'll be using it on a modern, rather less than inexpensive, and certainly not disposable, digital camera. But it's also beautiful, and wonderful, and exciting, and joyous, and even a tool to enable a kind of meditation, rejuvenation of the mind. This is the Guzman Utolens. Guzman is the brand, based in Kumamoto, Japan, and Utolens is the name derived from the source of the optics housed within its 3D printed mounting plate. Utolendesu, and I do apologize for my absurdly flinch-inducing attempt at Japanese pronunciation, for any native speakers out there, please forgive it, but Utolendesu is the name for what in English we would rather more comfortably call a Fuji Quick Snap, a disposable film camera. If you're too young, or at least didn't have a hipster phase in your 20s to know what that is, ask a grown-up. But in fact, the Fuji Quick Snap was considered the best of breed when it came to disposable cameras. None of them were particularly fantastic, because they were disposable, but, but the Fuji Quick Snap was largely regarded as one of the best. And in fact, it still is, because believe it or not, you can still buy them. I can literally walk into a camera store and get one today. I saw one yesterday when I was in the camera store looking for something else. Anyway, a few years back, as retro stuff is wont to do, like the inexplicable re-rise of vinyl records despite them sounding scratchy and horrible, disposable cameras came back into fashion in certain subcultures and on gimmick-friendly photography sharing sites like Instagram. And in an effort to emulate the lo-fi look, feel, flavor, and unique characteristics of these cameras, but for digital camera bodies, and in an authentic, more honest way than just overloading a normal shot with a bunch of fake lazy digital filter presets, the folk at Gizmon went ahead and slapped the same lens used in a quick snap camera into a pancake lens mount that can be used on a variety of modern mirrorless interchangeable lens cameras. In fact, they recycle these lenses from the used disposable cameras themselves. As I glossed over before, the housing of the lens is a high quality 3D print, and ordinarily this would seem like a bad idea. 3D printing is awesome for a lot of stuff, but for a lens mount, it's not the strongest or most long-term reliable choice. I mean, even with careful use, just normal wear and tear, taking this lens off and putting it back on again, and on and off and on and off and on again, it would make the fit worse and worse over time because these plastics are not especially stable for that kind of stuff. I know this because I have personally 3D printed lens adapter mounts before, and while useful in a pinch or for a gimmick, they're not very good long-term. Gizmont have anticipated this in their design, and instead of designing the lens to fit directly on a range of cameras, they've printed it with an old-school screw mount, what is known as an L39 mount, as a matter of fact. In fact, it's the same mount used on some of my 60-year-old rangefinder lenses. The screw mount itself will wear better over time than a modern bayonet mount will in a plastic material, just by nature of the way it screws in, but then they supply a nice high-quality metal mount adapter. The idea is to basically leave the lens in this adapter permanently, so its fully metal mount is the part that gets all the wear and tear from mounting it on the camera, and unmounting it, and mounting it, and unmounting it, and mounting it, thus protecting the plastic from excess wear and tear. Simultaneously solving the issue of a more fragile 3D printed mount and letting them manufacture one mount for multiple camera bodies, because now all they have to do is pop in whatever appropriate adapter it is for that particular customer. In my case, I'm using it on a Micro Four Thirds camera. But it's also available in other mounts as well, Sodis and Fujis, etc. And as the L39 mount is a decades old standard, you can even buy your own adapters to use this lens on other cameras if you switch bodies down the line, or like me, have several different cameras. Now, throughout this video already, you've been seeing what the lens does for yourself, so I won't bother with the usual lens review commentary on sharpness, or resolving power, or corner sharpness, or chromatic aberration, or flare characteristics. None of that stuff is a reason to own this lens. So now we get to the why. Why own a lens that is deliberately a lot worse than even a basic bitch kit lens? Well, let me tell you why I own lenses like this. 
No matter how passionate you are about photography or videography, either as a hobby or as a profession or both, no matter how much time and money you've invested in your arts and your craft, every now and again, you'll hit a patch where your muse just doesn't sing to you. Artists whose medium is language itself have a term for this, writer's block. I've never come across an equally snappy term for what happens behind a viewfinder for the same thing, but it happens there too. You just can't get into the groove. You feel uninspired. None of your ideas feel right. You just can't make them work. Or you're having trouble executing them in a way that you envision. Or maybe you're just stuck in a rut and are a little bored. So maybe our equivalent of writer's block is lens lock or shooter's stall. Or if, hey, if you have a better one, pop a comment and leave it in the down below. While you're down there in my down below area, please be gentle. But you have made it pretty deep into the video so far. So if you haven't yet, maybe make sure you hit the thumbs on your way past and Make sure the sub button is pressed and the bell is belled. Check in on that stuff. If not for me, and if not for yourself, then perhaps just to appease the mighty and terrible monster that is the YouTube algorithm. It hates us all. Oh, and that one weird trick I mentioned earlier on to get this thing to focus, particularly if you're trying to do uh, close focus stuff, is because it's screw mount, you can literally start unscrewing it from the adapter itself. Uh, and you get quite far away out before it sort of literally falls off. But yeah, by doing that, you're increasing the flange distance between the lens and the sensor, of course, which is effectively letting you close focus. You can't get sort of macro. You're still dealing with uh, maybe 30 to 40 centimeters as close as you can focus, but it does let you uh, even get a little depth of field going uh, and, and gets you sort of um, some sharper details up close if you're doing that. I use that for, I don't know, about 20% of the shots I took. Quite enjoyed doing it, actually. It's one of those things that, uh, you know, work within the limits of the tool, and see what you can get done. For years now, when I have hit Shooter's Stall, I've reached for a special collection of lenses I only rarely use for serious work-related stuff. But they exist in my drawers and on my shelves for one purpose and one purpose only. To have fun with. I have made videos on a few of these over the years. Everything from crazy super fisheye wide-angle lenses to crappy hipster plastic crap to things like pinhole lenses or body cap lenses even adapting 60-year-old Soviet-made rangefinder lenses to modern digital cameras. And if you're a regular around here, you will almost never see a single shot from any of these in any video I make, unless of course that video is a review of that product, as this one is. These things just exist to make me smile and to occasionally help me break out of a rut or a creative mud hole. Any creative or artists will learn this valuable lesson eventually. Sooner or later, you all will. But once it is learned, it's never forgotten. Limitations inspire. Sure, it's nice having a wide selection of tools. It's fantastic having a big shelf full of all different kinds of lenses, right tool for the right job after all. But that can also be stifling. If you only ever use tool X to do job Y, then that job gets done the same way every time because that's the proper way to do it. That's, that's the best way to do it. It's efficient, consistent, reliable, which is a good thing for like a mechanic, for example, but it can get stale when the work asks for creativity. So while one day deciding to hammer in all your screws with a crescent wrench might be a dumb idea for a carpenter making a bedside table for a client, ask a woodworker who whittles why with a workshop filled with a variety of likely expensive and specialist woodworking tools, why they get so much enjoyment out of just carving little items out of lumps of wood using only a single small knife. It's because when you set hard limits, when you give yourself only a basic tool, you force yourself to think in new ways about what you're doing and how you're doing it and how to get there. You break free of habit, of autopilot thinking, of muscle memory. You're freed from the way it should be done and are forced to think about how to get the job done with whatever basic or restrictive tool you have in hand. And lenses like this always help me break out of a rut. Limited as it is by nature of its design, it was never crafted to be an optically ideal photography tool. It was designed to fit within its own limits. It was made for a disposable film camera. It had to be small, it had to be made from cheap materials, it had to be fast and easy to make 
and cheap to make. It had to be light. It had to be easy to shoot with for fun and novel occasions that these cameras were sold for. These were never sold to photographers to do photography. This was just fun, happy snap holiday crap. Drunken wedding reception or whatever. So within those limits, we got a fixed focus lens. We got fixed aperture, relatively wide angle lens with then perfect plastic optics that deliver a relatively low contrast, slightly washed out, gently soft and almost iconic look, including that sort of bluish purplish hue you get, particularly when you manage to get some lens flares in there. Everything just looks a bit on that purple side somehow. And I'm not sure if that's because these lenses lack the coatings that usually filter out these near ultraviolet rays that pretty much every lens does these days, or maybe it's something to do with the plastic it's made out of that just lets more of this purple through or something. I don't know. I don't care. But limits inspire. And my favorite limiting tool for shooting with are odd, wacky little lenses like this Gizmon's Ute lens. And not for the poser hipster crap, and not for the pathetic reach of vanity to try and stand out on vapid sites like Instagram, but just to enjoy the process itself. For me, it's a kind of meditation. Shooting with tools like this force me out of habit, out of instinct, and to stop my mind wandering. It's like a meditation. It clears my mind of everything but the moment, everything but the frame inside my camera's viewfinder. That instant is all that exists. That emotion is the only thing that exists. And regardless of if the photo itself has any artistic merit or aesthetic value at all, it's the process of making the image that is valuable to me. If the shot happens to be nice and worth sharing with others, that's a nice bonus. But it's not why I put the lens on the camera to begin with. It's not why I clicked the shutter button in that moment. That was all for me. My indulgence and my moment of beautiful, wonderful zen. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention when I was recording that voiceover stuff there, and we might as well do it live here, is it also comes with a bunch of uh, stickers as well, if I can get them out of the tube here. Come on. Oh, come on, just behave yourself. Just, just come here, come here. There we go. Uh, so yeah, it's got a bunch of stickers to go around the sort of blank part of the uh, of the lens there. So I've got these are the, uh, the sort of brand colours of that Fujifilm Quick Snap camera we're talking about. Uh, you got a little vinyl record here because of course you do. It's hipster. Some sort of abstract bubbly swirly thing, and a little planet globe there. Uh, and if you go to the website, you can actually download a template. Uh, so if you've got a printer at home and something capable of printing on sticker paper, for example, uh, you can actually just make up your own little lens surrounds to, uh, to pop on there, which I thought is pretty cute. Nice little detail there. So thank you for indulging me on talking through this wacky little lens. Link in the down below area if you want to see if you can get one for your very own. And of course, thank you as always to the glorious and kind and generous patrons scrolling by up above there. You guys are wonderful. Thank you ever so much for your above and beyond support.